In this lesson, we're going to create a captured frame by using strictly console variables. And then we're going to go inside of track view and render out a sequence that will go into the same folder, but it would be an image sequence that you could stitch together in After Effects or maybe QuickTime Pro. So the first thing I want to do is go up into my console. If it's not active, you want to go to the tab here. We're going to type in capture. And we can see that our format is JPEG, and the capture folder we're going to leave default, which is the capture output. The main ones we want to concentrate this first time is capture frame once, and then capture frames. So I'm going to go ahead and click on capture frame once, and I'm going to set that to true, because we want to only render one frame. Now I go back and I type in capture frames again, and now I'm ready to actually capture the frames. Just so you can know, this is the actual folder where it will show up. So what I'm going to do is execute the console variable, and we should see a new folder created, which has our rendered image. Inside of here, I have 16 by 9, and you can set the actual resolution in the camera here. It can be all the way up to 4K, so you can get a very, very high resolution image quite easily inside of the engine. So going back to capture frames, I'm going to set that to true and press enter. In doing so, if I bring this folder back, we can see that we now have capture output inside of our folder, and it's only rendered one frame. So opening it up, this is exactly what we expected to see. The next thing that I want to do is I want to maybe render out a sequence inside a track view. What I need for this is actually to create a camera. So in the miscellaneous tab, we can go to camera, and I'm going to drag it into the scene. I'm going to press control and shift so I know it's right on the train in front of me, and I'm going to move it up just a little bit so I can see all of the frustum. I'm going to rename this to cap cam and press enter, and now I'm ready to go inside of track view. Inside of tools, we have track view, and it's snapped down to the bottom here. And what I want to do is I want to create a sequence. So if we go to file, new, I can create a new sequence. Export toot. So inside of this, we can look at a few things. I'm not going to use my curve editor right here. I'm strictly looking at my timeline. I want to make sure my playback on the view. So frame rate is 30, and the playback speed is 1 times. And then on the view, I have it set to time. Make sure you have it set on time, because then you can actually see the amount of time that is surpassed. What I want to do is add this selected entity into this track. So I'm going to go ahead and add the selected entity and we now see that we have CapCam inside of track view. With my middle mouse button held down, I can scroll, kind of like a hand, and then if I hold down control and scroll outward, I can begin to see my entire track. So what we can do is turn on record, and we can set a keyframe at the beginning. So now we've set a keyframe for this camera. Let's move it all the way to the end at 10, and let's begin to move this. So now we're creating a green line. And this actually signals that we have created keyframes in between. I'm going to keep moving it because we have 10 seconds to move across, and we want to see the whole thing. Now I'm going to turn off recording. I'm going to go back to the beginning, and then we can click play and see our camera simply move around. So now what I've done is I've created a sequence and I have a movement and I'm ready to actually use the camera. But there's one more thing I need to do and that is direct the sequence to look through the camera. So if I right click inside of here, I can add a node that is a director node. And if I double click, I can get a keyframe and what I want to do is add this cam. So now I have this camera which is signaling to look through this. And if you want to look through the, the camera real quick, you can do control and comma, and that will actually switch or toggle through the cameras in your scene. So we're going to do it once again to go back to default because we don't really want to be in that. And now we're ready to render it out. So if we go to tools, render sequence, we can come in here and we can see that our start frame and end frame is 300. And at 30 FPS, that's 300 frames for 10 seconds. The director node needs to be set though. Add our camera to the batch. Now with all of our settings in place, we're ready to click render. Now with this completely rendered out, we can go and check our folder. I'm going to bring it back up. 
we can go to our system, Crytek, Game SDK. We can look into our captured output, and we can see that inside of this folder we have all of these frames available. Next thing that we want to do is we want to put it inside of After Effects. With After Effects now open, we want to right click and import a file. If we go up to our output and we select this frame, we can see that it will import it as footage, as a target sequence, and that's exactly what we want to do. So if I open that up and drag this into the composition, the first frame is going to just be me kind of initializing. But once you move into it, you can see that we've quickly snapped from there to the camera. And if I do a RAM preview, I'm going to actually set this to half so it does it faster. And go ahead and build this. And now with it completely built, we're able to go in and see that we have a simple transition from one way to the other on this camera. It's quite slow and it tracks. But with this, you're able to export out through image sequences any kind of cinematic trailer that you may have in your game and get it even up to the quality of 4K. You can use anti-aliasing. And you can enable this to have really, really high quality animations and ways to distribute or market your material with the editor.